This is part four of a series of video tutorials on how to create an airplane in Plane Maker. Plane Maker is a software program that comes with X-Plane, even if you download only the demo version of X-Plane, and it allows you to make free planes, as many as you like, and you can test fly them, even in the demo version of X-Plane, which allows you uh, to test it for 10 minutes in a row. The uh, plane we're working on is the Embraer Regional Jet 140. It's a plane that I accumulated a whole bunch of data from before even starting to make the plane. In the first tutorial, I shared with you how to uh, extract the data you need to make the body and the wings of the plane and how to position it properly. In the second tutorial, I walked you through how to create the fuselage. In the third tutorial, we talked about the wings. And this is the fourth tutorial, and we're going to talk about the engines. So you go to the engine specs menu, and you've got a description tab, which uh, you'll punch in all the details that these engines have. And first, we'll deal with the location. So we'll add two engines. Uh, with this button right here. And by the way, a plane maker has a series of pop-up tools that help you describe uh, what these buttons do, what these numbers mean, and they'll help you build the plane. So high bypass jet. We have a list of available options here. Carb reciprocating, that's a cylinder engine. Injected reciprocating, that's a fuel injection. Turboprop engine, electric motors, low bypass jets, high bypass jets, rockets, tip rockets and turbo props. High bypass jets, how do you know how to select this? Well, a little bit of research into regular plane engines. This is a typical high bypass jet engine. It features a big fan in the front that sucks in a whole bunch of air. Part of that air gets routed into the actual power plant. And the power plant has a series of low pressure compressors and that air then goes into high pressure compressors that spin faster and compress the air even more. Once it's really, really dense and compressed, it's ignited, and those heated compressed gases rush out the back of the engine as hot gases, and they actually power this shaft here, which in turn turns this fan and causes a dual airflow to come out of the back of the engine. The one airflow is hot, high-speed gas. The other airflow is cool, mid-speed gas. And this other air here represents environmental air. Why high bypass? Well, first of all, fuel efficiency. It's a lot more fuel efficient to do it this way than to just have the jet engine expel gas at high speeds. Second of all, it's noise. The high speed hot gas that exits the back of the engine actually normally would collide with the environmental air, causing eddies and turbulences that produce a lot of noise. And that is what we see in the older jets like the 707 and the 727. They, had, they were low bypass jets, but high bypass jets are more efficient and more quiet. So that's what we're going to use. Now the location I've looked up beforehand. The location is 20 feet behind the reference point, And the lateral arm is uh, 6.9 feet to the left and 6.9 feet to the right. And you can just enter in these numbers like that. Sometimes I'm actually able to punch in the numbers directly if you, but some of them don't seem to, to allow me to do that. The vertical arm I know is two feet above the reference point. So now let's close this and see where it placed the engine points. It's pretty close to the point where I would imagine the main fan blades to be and the main, main point of thrust. So now that we've got the position figured out, let's go in and determine the specifications. You can do a lot of this research online, and what I came up with is a PDF file. And I got some static thrust data here. Maximum allowable will be more like 7,580. So let's do that, 7,580. The next thing is rotor speed. We have a percentage number here, N1 and N2. N1 refers to the main fan rotational speed and N2 refers to the turbine compressor section speed. So we have 100%, uh, but what are the RPMs of this? Well, let's see if we can find that here. 100% N1 equals 8,700 RPM. That's the number I'm interested in punching in here. 8,700 RPM. The compressor area, I'm not exactly sure how much it is, 3.14 times the compressor radius squared. So pi r squared, I don't know exactly what the compressor radius is. I know what the fan radius is. I did the uh, pi r squared thing already, and I came up with 8.08 .08 as my 
compressor area. So let me punch that in. 0 0.08 square feet. Now this data is actually enough to get us flying an X-plane, although uh, we're going to have to come back later on and fill out some of these uh, numbers according to the specifications that we find on the brochures and online. There's one thing I just need to check. Yeah, here it says here the total number of thrust points. This needs to match the number of engines because we can't have two engines and only one thrust point unless they funnel into the same output. So we'll increase this to two. And next we'll work on the nacelles. We have to build these things around the engines. So we go to the nacelles menu and say aircraft has a nacelle over this engine and over engine number two as well. So if we close this, we see that there's a default nacelle starting to shape up around the engine thrust point. And if we want to model them in detail, we go to this. I already exported them from Photoshop. Basically what I had here was an image of the plane. I copied and pasted this, put it on a different document, and exported them as separate layers. So they are now here, and I can start modeling my airplane accordingly. But before I trust this zoom setting, I actually need to do a rough length estimate on the entire view. So I need to pull this set of vertices over to the tip of that. And this set of vertices has to line up with the, with the back end of that. So let's do that. Another point is that we don't want the first opening here to be the edge of the front nacelle. We want there to be a spinner inside the engine that is the, uh, the hub of the main fan. That should be sort of in the middle of right where the thrust point is there. So my plan is to make a, a cone-shaped thing there, go out, go forward, and then start creating the outside of the engine. So we need one, two, three, four stations before we can start uh, moving to the outside of the nacelle. So let's go here. And we're going to start with a little bit in front of the thrust point, maybe one. And that needs to match up two. So, and then we'll go to, okay, so this is the tip of the cone. This will be the base of the cone. And then, let's move this stuff in a little bit. Make an ellipse out of it. And then this is the uh, edge of the cone. And then here we start going out forward to, I think it's 3.2. And this will become, I need to make this actually wider because I know that the radius of the outside is wider. And now let's see how this looks. This doesn't quite line up with the front yet, so I need to make it a little longer. 4.2, maybe that's one foot longer. Yeah, that looks about right. And then I can make the curve on the outside there. Let's see what it looks like towards the back. We need to add about half a foot to the back. And we probably need to add more stations, so let me go ahead and do that right away. 14 stations should be enough. And again, we want to make close it off on the inside of the, of the uh, engine to eight and a half, and, or nine and a half, sorry, I see that there's a nine here, and I'll go to nine and a half here as well. So let's see how this looks. Okay, that looks like it's it's got the right dimensions. Let's go back to nacelles, and let's start shaping it. So now I have the correct zoom setting. We're going to come back after our flight tests and create the rest of the parts needed to make this airplane complete. There's some stuff we left out, for example, this little part of the vertical stabilizer, this part of the fuselage here, and stuff like that. The next thing we want to focus on is the control geometry and the landing gear. And after we've got that finished, we're ready to take the plane into the sim.